Oh, hello, and welcome to Alice in Wonderland! Thank you so much for being here. You look like an excellent crowd. I said an excellent crowd! My name is Trey Witzel, and I'm the director of this show, and tonight I will be playing the role of Humpty Dumpty. My wife and I started the West Plains Playhouse to shine a bigger spotlight on even bigger talent right here in our own backyard. <laughs> Tonight's performance will be an hour and 30 minutes with a 15 minute intermission. In the case of an emergency, exits are located behind the stage and out the way you came. And please be mindful of the aisles. If your little one gets fussy tonight, take them away. <laughs> but do come back. Please silence your cell phone at this time, and please feel free to take all the pictures and videos that you want. Uh, tonight, we are doing a special taping, so be loud. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> and please be mindful of the camera. Now, let's go down the rabbit hole together as I turn it over to the cast and crew of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Oh, dear, I've seen my fair share of white rabbits, but never one with a 
pocket watch. Oh dear, oh dear. Excuse me, Mr. Rabbit. No, 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 no. I'm overdue. Oh, I'm really in a stew. No time to say goodbye. Hello. Uh. <laughs> I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Something tells me he might have been late for something. Something far more precious than William the Conqueror, the visit to be or anything like that. Perhaps I shall go see what's happening in that rabbit hole. <coughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Rabbit? It's awfully dark down there. Perhaps if I get a bit further, I can get further. Than Edwin and Morcar, the Earls of Mercia and Northumbria, declared for him. And even Stigand, the patriotic Archbishop of Canterbury, found it advisable. <laughs>
colors of the Nile on every golden scale. How cheerfully he seems to grin, how neatly spreads his claws, and welcomes little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. Oh dear, I'm sure those are not the right words. Good heavens, there's no more than three inches left of me. It must be the fan. That was a narrow escape. Now for the garden. The key, the key. Oh dear, oh dear, things are worse than ever. <laughs> One, 
But she deserves a prize too, you know. Of course. What else have you got in your pocket? Um, only a thimble. It's a long and sad tale. It is a long tale, certainly, but why do you call it sad? <clears throat> Fury said to a mouse that he met in his house, let us go to law. I will prosecute you. Come, I'll take no denial. We must have a trial, for really this morning I've nothing to do. The mouse said to the cur, such a trial, dear sir, with no jury, no judge, we'd be wasting our bread. I'll be judge, and I'll be jury, said cunning old fury. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. You are not attending. I beg your pardon. You got into the fifth bend, I think. I have not. A not? Oh, do let me help to undo it. I will do nothing of the sort. Good day, good day. What a pity it wouldn't stay. I wish I had my Dinah here. I know I do. She'd soon fetch it back. Who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask? Ooh, Dinah's our cat. <laughs> and she's such a capital one for catching mice, if you can believe it. And oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. Why, she'll eat a little bird as soon as look at it. Oh, I really must be going. The night air doesn't suit my friend. <laughs> I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah. Nobody here seems to like her, and I'm sure she's the best cat in the world. Oh, my dear Dinah, I wonder if I shall ever see you again. Oh, the Duchess! Oh, the Duchess! Oh, my dear boss! Oh, my fair and whiskers! She's gonna have me executed, the sure is! Ah, uh, the ferrets are ferrets! Oh, where can I put them? Oh, they can be anywhere! She's gonna have my head, she will! It was one of you, lot, wasn't it? I knew it! Oh, oh, she's gonna have my head, she will, she will! Oh, go! Oh. oh, why, Mary Ann, what are you doing out here? You go back home this instant and catch me my gloves and my fan! He took me for his housemaid. How strange it is to be taking orders from a rabbit. Next thing I know, I'll be taking orders from Dinah. But I really should get him his fan and gloves. That is, if I can find him. Who are you? I, I hardly know, sir, just at present. At least, I knew who I was when I got up this morning. But I must have changed several times since then. What do you mean by this? Explain yourself. I'm afraid I can't explain myself, sir, because I'm not myself, you see? I do not see. Well, I'm afraid I can't put it any more clearly, for I can't understand it myself to begin with. And being so many different sizes in a day is very confusing. It is not. Well, perhaps you haven't found it yet, but when you have to turn it into a chrysalis, and you will someday, you know. And then after that, into a butterfly. I should think you'll feel a little curious, won't you? A not a bit. Perhaps your feelings may be different. All I know is it would feel very curious to me. A you? A who are a you? I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Uh, why? <laughs> uh, come back here. <laughs> I have something very important to tell you. <laughs> I keep your a temper. <coughs> Is that all? Uh, no. You are changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I can't remember things as I used to, and I don't keep the same size for ten minutes together. I can't remember what a things. Well, I tried to say how doth the little busy be, but it all came different. Hmm. I repeat, you are old, Father William. I begin. You are old, Father William, the young man said. And your hair has become very white. And yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think, at your age, it is right? Another verse. 
louder. Shoulders back, and don't slur your words. <laughs> Continue. In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it might injure the brain. But now that I am perfectly sure I have none, why, I do it again and again. <laughs> that was not said right. Not quite right, I'm afraid. Some of the words have gotten altered. <coughs> it was wrong from beginning to end. <laughs> so, what height do you wish to be? Well, I'm not particular to height. Only one doesn't like changing so often, you know. I do not know. Are you contented now? I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you don't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. <laughs> it is a most wonderful height to be. But I'm not used to it. Will you grow used to it? A one side will make you grow larger, and the other side will make you grow smaller. What was that? <laughs> A one side will make you grow larger, and the other side will make you grow smaller. One side of what? The other side of what? The mushroom. But a mushroom is a circle. Now, which is which? Well, there's only one way to find out. Not that one, and the other side will. That's much better. Now that I'm back to my usual size, I should try to ask someone for help. There's someone now. Oh, 
don't bother me. I never could abide figures.
last night. I was a redhead, and I was married to Amber Heard. <laughs> Amber who? Amber Heard. Amber Heard who? I'm changing the subject. <laughs> it must be very uncomfortable for the doormats. Though, as it is asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. No room, no room! There's plenty of room! Have some wine. I don't see any wine. There isn't any! Then it wasn't very nice of you to offer it. It wasn't very nice of you to sit down without being invited. I didn't know it was your table. It saved all a great many more than three. Your hair wants cutting. You should learn how to make personal remarks. It's very rude. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Come, we shall have some fun. I'm glad they begin to ask riddles. I believe I can answer that. You mean to say you think you can find the answer to it? Exactly so. Then why don't you say what you mean? I do. I mean, I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. But that's the same thing a bit. Well, you might just as well say, I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. Now, you might as well just say, I like what I get. It's the same thing as, I get what I like. <laughs> you might as well say, I sleep when I breathe. It's the same thing as, I breathe when I sleep. It's the same thing with you. <laughs> what day of the month is it? The fourth. Two days wrong. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works. Mm, it was the best butter. <coughs> well, some crumbs must have gotten inside. You still have to put it in with a bread knife. <laughs> it was the best butter. What a curious little watch. It tells what day of the month it is in your field cook. Well, of course it doesn't. Does your say what year it is? Of course not. But that's because it stays like that for such a long time. Well, it's just the same as mine. I don't understand. The Dormouse is asleep again. Hmm. Have you found the answer to the riddle yet? No, I give up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea. No, I. I think you should stop wasting your time by asking riddles that have no answers. Well, you obviously don't know time. If you did, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. I don't understand you. Of course not. I dare say you never even met time. <laughs> Perhaps not. But I know I have to beat time and Laureen is teaching me music. Oh, that account for it. Time won't stand for a beating. <laughs> no, if you only kept on his good side, he'd do almost anything you'd ask. Say it were... Nine in the morning, just in time for lessons. All you'd have to do is whisper a hint of time, and around the clocks would go to twinkling. Half past one, dinner time. I only went at one. That would be grand, certainly. But then you would be hungry for it, you know. Not at first, perhaps, but you could keep it to half past one as long as you like. Is that how you manage? Not I. We quarreled last March. Uh, just around the time he went mad, you know. Oh. <laughs> it was a glorious banquet put on by the Queen of Hearts. I had to sing a song. It went all something like this. Twinkle, twinkle, little pet. How I wonder what you're at. You know the song, perhaps? I suppose I've heard something like it. It goes on like this, you know. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. Well, I had hardly finished the first verse when the queen stopped screaming, He's murdering time! Off with his head! I'll just be savage! <laughs> what is this? Did he want to do a thing I asked? Oh, it's six o'clock now. <coughs> That's why there's so many tea things laid out here. Precisely so. I've no time to wash the dishes between the whiles. So you keep them until the beginning? Yes, until all the dishes are used up. But then what do you do when you get back to the beginning if you keep using up all the dishes? Suppose we change the subject. Uh, I've grown tired of this. I vote for the young lady to tell us a story. I'm afraid I don't know any. Oh, then the dormouse will tell
tell us one. Wake up, Dormouth! I wasn't asleep. I heard every word you fellas were saying. But tell us a story! Yes, please do! And be quick about it, or you'll be asleep before it's done. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. Their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly. And they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on? Syrup. <laughs> well, they couldn't have done that, you know. They had been ill. <laughs> so they were. Very ill. Have some more tea? I haven't had none to begin with, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take what? It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked for your opinion! <laughs> well, who's making personal remarks now? <laughs> Morning. And her name is? How 
should I know? It's none of my business. Open her head! Open her head! Consider, yes! my dear, she's only a child.
tarts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts! <laughs> and took them quite away. Consider your verdict. Uh, not yet, Your Majesty. There's much, much more to come, if I may. Sentence first, verdict afterwards. The Majesty's in the way. Always on. Always, Your Majesty. Yes, my girl. Off with the sentence! Consider, my dear. We've called no witnesses yet. Couldn't we maybe hear one or two, huh? Maybe? Oh, all right. But get on with it. Call your first witness. The Mad Hatter. Died, Your Majesty, for, for bringing the pit. I had quite finished my tea when I was sent for it. You ought to have finished. When did you begin? Fourteenth <coughs> of March, I think it was. Fifteenth. Sixteenth. Write that down. Take off your hat. Oh, the thing is mine. Stolen? Oh! No, no, I'm a hatter. I, I keep them in the cell. I'm not of my own. Oh. Give your evidence, and don't be nervous, or... Or I will have you executed on the spot. Bring me the list of the singers of the last concert. The <laughs> Give your evidence, or... Or I will have you executed whether you're nervous or not. Uh, I'm a poor man, Your Majesty. I, I haven't just begun my tea. What would it be? Uh, the dwindling of the bread and the butter and the twinkling of the tea. The twinkling of what? It began with tea. Of course we can begin with the tea. Do you take me for a dunce? If that's all you know, you may stand down. I can't get any lower. I want the floor of it in. Then you may sit down. I'd rather finish my tea. You may go. Just take his head off outside. No. Consider your verdict. Uh, not yet, Your Majesty. <coughs> this piece of paper has just been picked up. It seems that it's a set of verses. Is it in the president's handwriting? No, it's not. And that is the most curious thing about it. <gasps> he must have imitated someone else's hand. <gasps> Please, Your Majesty. I didn't write it, and they can't prove that I did. No one signed it, the end. If you didn't sign it, that only makes matters worse. You must have meant some mischief for you to sign it like an honest man. That just proves the guilt. It proves nothing of the sort. Why, what you don't even know they're about. Read them. Oh, where shall I begin, Your Majesty? Begin at the beginning until you come to the end. Then stop. They told me you had been to her and mentioned me to him. She gave me a good character, but said I could not swim. Hmm, that's the most important piece of evidence we've heard yet. Now let the jury- If any of them can solve it, I'll give them six pence. I don't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. She doesn't believe there's an atom of meaning in it. No meaning in it, that saves us a world of trouble, you know, as we needn't try to find any, and yet I don't know. Well, I seem to see some meaning in it after all. I said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? Does it look like I can? <laughs> all right, so far we know it to be true. That's the jury, of course. I gave her one, they gave him two. Why, that must be what he did with the tarts, you know. But it goes on. They all return from me to you. Why, there they are. Nothing can be clearer than that. But then again, before she had this <coughs> fit. Uh, you don't have fits, my dear, I, I think. Never. Huh. Then the words don't fit you. It's a pun. <laughs> About this business. Nothing! 
Nothing whatever? Nothing whatever. That's very important. Uh, unimportant, your majesty means, of course. Unimportant, of course, I meant important, unimportant, important, unimportant. If, um, unimportant, yes, yes, to be sure. Consider your verdict. No, no, since it's first verdict afterwards. Stop it, no. Tweetledee. 
Now <laughs> this square is mostly water, and it belongs to a mock turtle. Whatever is a mock turtle? It's a thing that mock turtle soup is made from. <laughs> I never saw one nor heard of one. <laughs> the sixth square belongs to Humpty Dumpty. But you make no remark. I, I didn't know I had to make one just then. You should have said. It's extremely kind of you to tell me all of this. But we'll suppose it's said. The seventh square is all forest. However, a knight will show you the way. And in the eighth square, you shall be a queen. And it's all feasting and fun. <laughs> Speak French when you can't think of the English for a thing. Turn out your toes when you walk. And remember who you are. She can run very fast. Goodbye. <laughs> Tweedledum and Tweedledee. If you think we're waxworks, you ought to pay you no. Know, waxworks ain't made to be like that for nothing, no how. Contrarywise, if you think we're alive, you ought to speak. I'm sure I'm very sorry. I know what you're thinking, but it isn't true, no how. Contrarywise, if it was so, it might be. And if it were so, it would be. But as it isn't, it ain't. <laughs> That's logic. <laughs> I was thinking which is the best way out of this wood. It's getting dark. Would you tell me, please? <laughs> they look so exactly like a couple of schoolboys. First boy. No how. Next boy. Contrarywise. Would you tell me, please? I really should be going. You can't go yet. No, the pizza just started. I'm very sorry. Do you play hide and seek? No, thank you. If you stay long enough, we might have a battle. That's very kind of you, but I really should be going. Why? Because I should be off to the end square. Why? Well, I'm curious to know if I should become a queen. Oh, she's curious. The oysters were curious, too, weren't they? Hey, and you remember what happened to them? Poor things. Why? What happened to the oysters? Oh, you wouldn't be interested. But I am. Oh, no. You're in too much of a hurry. Perhaps I could spare a little time. You could? Do you like poetry? Yes, pretty well. Some poetry. The walrus and the carpenter. Now that's the longest thing. If it's very long, would you tell me? Or the story of the curious oysters. <laughs> the sun was shining on the sea. Shining with all his might. He did his best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this was odd. Because it was the middle of the night. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see in such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, that would be grand. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us. The walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. Uh, we cannot do with more than four to give a hand to each. But Mother Oyster winked her eye and shook her heavy head. She knew too well this was no time to leave their oyster bed. The sea is nice. Take my advice and stay right here. Mom said, But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for a treat. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, you know, they hadn't any feet. <laughs> the walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low, and all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and where the pigs have wings. A loaf of bread is what we chiefly need, though pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. 
Uh, now if you're ready, oysters dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us! The oysters cry, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the wolver said. Do you admire the view? It seems a shame to play them such a trick after we brought them out so far and had them truck so quick. The carpenter said nothing but... The butter spread too thick. Oh, I wait for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears he sorted out those of the larger size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we begin trying home again? But answer came there none. But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they need everyone. Handkerchief, so the carpenter couldn't count how many he took. That was mean. Then I liked the carpenter best, if he didn't eat so many as the walrus. But he ate as many as he could get. Well, they were both very unpleasant characters. At any rate, I really shouldn't be getting out of this wood. It's getting dark. Do you think it's going to rain? <laughs> no, I don't think it is, no how. But it may rain elsewhere. It may, if it chooses. We've no objection contrary-wise. Selfish things. <laughs> Might as well try talking with the flowers as I couldn't get any sense from those two. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Oh! I didn't mean to startle you, my dear. I, I didn't know you could talk. <laughs> we can talk. Can all flowers talk? As well as you can. If there's anyone we're talking to, that is. Or about. <laughs> <laughs> and just what kind of garden do you come from? Oh, well, I don't, well, I don't come from any garden. Do you suppose she's a wildflower? Oh, no, I'm not a wildflower. Just what species, or shall we say, genus are you, my dear? Well, I suppose you could call me genus, humanus, and uh, Alice. Ever seen an Alice with a blossom like that? Come to think of it, have you ever seen an Alice? Yes, and did you notice her petals? What a peculiar color. And no fragrance. Just look at those stems. Rather scrawny, <coughs> I'd say. I think she's pretty. <laughs> Quiet, bud. But I'm not a flower. Aha, uh -huh. just as I suspected. She's nothing but a common mobile vulgarious. Oh, oh no. no! A common what? <laughs> to put it bluntly, a weed. <gasps> I'm not a weed. Well, you wouldn't expect her to admit it. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, goodness. Don't let her stay here and go to seed. Now, now, girl, please. We don't want weeds in our bed. Oh, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. If I were my right size, I could pick each and every one of you if I wanted to. And I guess that'd teach you. Are there any more people in the garden? People like you. You mean? Yes. There's another female in the garden somewhere. Same upward shape as you. But she's much paler. And her petals are shorter. I think. Does she ever come out here? She's coming this way now. I hear a footstep. Thump, thump. Along the gravel walk. I don't want to listen to her. She talks such nonsense. Like this one. <laughs> Let's plant ourselves someplace else. Yes. <laughs> they not only talk, they walk. Curiouser and curiouser. Here's somebody shall be blown away. I'm glad I happened to be in the way. Oh, 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 oh. Bread and butter, bread and butter. Oh. Am I addressing the white queen? Oh, yes, if you call that a dressing, I have no notion of the thing at all. If your majesty will only tell me the right way to begin, I'll do it as well as I can. I don't want it done at all. I've been a dressing for the last two hours. May I put your shawl straight for you? Oh, there must be something wrong with it. Out of temper, I think. The pity, pity. 
of a lady's maid. Oh, I think I shall take you with pleasure. That will be two pence a day and jam every other day. <laughs> I don't want you to hire me, and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam. Well, I don't want any today, at any rate. Well, you couldn't have it today, even if you wanted it. The rookies. Jam tomorrow. <laughs> Jam yesterday, but never jam today. <laughs> but it must come sometime to jam today. No, it hurts. It's jam every other day, and today isn't every other day. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand you. It is dreadfully confusing. Oh, that's the effect of living backwards. It makes one giddy and purse. Living backwards? I never heard of such a thing. Well, there's one great advantage to it, and it's that one's memory works both ways. I'm sure mine only one works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. It's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. What sort of things do you remember best? Oh, things that happen the week after next. For instance, the king's messenger is in prison now being punished. Trial doesn't begin until next Wednesday. And of course, the crime comes last of all. Suppose he never commits the crime? Well, that would be for the better, wouldn't it? Of course it would be all the better, but it wouldn't be all the better to be punished. You're wrong. At any rate, were you ever punished? Only for faults. And you were for the better for it, I know. Yes, but then I had done the things I was punished for. That makes all the difference. If you hadn't done them, then that would have been for the better, wouldn't it? Better, better, better! There's a mistake somewhere. Under the water, 
The old master there was an old turtle. We called him, sorry, we called him Tortoise. <laughs> Why do you call him Tortoise if he wasn't one? Because he tort us. You <laughs> ought to be ashamed of yourself for asking such a simple question. Really, you're very dull. <laughs> Drive on, old fella. Don't be all day about it. Well, we had the best <coughs> education. In, thing, in fact, we went there every day. I've been to day school, too. With extras? Yes, French and music. And washing? Certainly not. Oh, then yours wasn't a very good school. <laughs> but you couldn't have wanted to wash much, living at the bottom of the sea. Oh, no, not me. I couldn't afford it. I only took the normal courses. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours a day did you do lessons? Ten on the first, the nine on the second, and so on. That's why they call them lessons, you know, because they lesson. <laughs> then the 11th day must have been a holiday. Clever girl. But how did you manage on the 12th? Oi, that is enough about lessons. Would you like to hear the Mock Turtle sing you a song? <gasps> oh, please, if the Mock Turtle would be so kind. There's no accounting for taste, is there? Sing, uh, Turtle Soup. Why don't you, old fellow? <clears throat> Beautiful soap, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup, beautiful soup. So about the evening, beautiful soup. Oh, mess it up to you, Missy. Wait, please, I need directions. My love, I won't. Then stir your stuff. Off with your head! Oh. Yeah. All this talk of soup, I should like an egg. <laughs> oh well, I suppose a bite wouldn't hurt. Ignorant of me. 
It is a cravat, child, and a beautiful one, as you say. It was a present given to me by the white king and queen. Uh, there it, now. Was it really? Yes. They gave it to me as an unbirthday present. I beg your pardon. I'm not offended. I mean, oh, what is an unbirthday present? It is a present given not on your birthday, of course. I prefer birthday presents best. You don't know what you're talking about. I grow tired of this. I beg your pardon? I grow tired of your rudeness. I've been polite as I can be, but now I must be going. Get but, up, wall! But I... Goodbye. But... A goodbye. sandwiches and clothing in it. I let it hang upside down so the rain doesn't get inside. But you do know the lid is open. You do know the things can get out. I did not know this. <laughs> well, then the things are falling out. It's of no use to me now. There's a mouse trap on your horse's neck. It's not very likely that there'll be any mice on your horse's back. Oh, not very likely, perhaps. But if they do choose to come, I don't have what them running about, you see? It's always good to plan ahead for anything. I hope you have your hair well fastened on. Only in the usual way. <coughs> well, that's hardly enough. The wind here is so very strong. It's as strong as soup. Have you invented a plan to keep it from falling off? Not yet. But I have a plan to keep it from falling off. I know what you say that. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Well, good. You take an upright stick, you see, and you work your hair up like a fruit tree. Now, see, the reason the hair falls off is because it hangs down. <laughs> Things never fall upward, you know. That's a plan of my own invention. You may try if you like. <laughs> What makes you say that? Because people that had practice don't fall off so. What's the word? What's the word? Easily. I've had plenty of practice. Plenty of practice. You see, the great art of riding <laughs> is that you got to keep your balance. It's ridiculous. You might as well have a horse on wheels. Does that kind of ride more smoothly? Uh, yes. I shall get one. Or two. Several. How do you speak so quietly with your head downward? What does it matter? 
matter which way my body's facing. My mind keeps working all the same. But listen, I must be going now, leaving you. Oh, I see that you're sad. Hmm. I could sing you a song to lift your spirits. Is it long? Yes, very long. Maybe next time. I think you'll really love it. It's a very beautiful. Everyone I sing it to, it just brings tears to their eyes. Or else. Or else what? Or else it doesn't. <laughs> Anyways, I shall be going. I'd like to you just maybe stick around long enough to see me off. I shall be long. If you just stand here and wave your handkerchief when I reach to the corner in the road. You see, I, I think it'll encourage me. Of course I'll wait. And thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you. And you. And I'm going to look into those horses with wheels. <laughs> Well, I do hope I encourage him. And now for the ace glass, I'm a queen. Sometimes. Can I tell you a 
secret. Mm -hmm. I know words of one letter. Isn't that grand? <laughs> oh, don't be discouraged. You'll get it in time. <laughs> Can you answer useful questions? Yes. How is bread made? I know that. You take some flour and then Where do you pick the flour? In the hedge or the garden? You don't pick it, it's round. So how many acres of ground? Acres. You, you leave out too many details. <laughs> Found her head, she'll be feverish after so much thinking. <laughs> Beth, she's all better now. Now, your dinner party. The guests have already been invited, so we must hurry before they fall asleep. Oh, I know exactly how they feel. I remember. So sleepy. Oh, she is tired, poor thing. Smooth her hair. Lend her your nightcap. And sing her a soothing lullaby. I'm afraid I don't have my nightcap with me. And I don't know any soothing lullabies. Well, I must do it myself. Hush a bye, lady, in Alice's lap. Till the feast's ready with time for a nap. When the feast's over, <coughs> we'll go to the ball. Red Queen and White Queen and Alice and all. There, now you know the words. Just sing it for me. I'm feeling sleepy too. Oh, no, 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 oh, righty then. <laughs> <laughs> what am I to... Oh. Shh! What am I to do? Do get off of me, you heavy things! I don't suppose there's been more than one queen at a time. There couldn't, you know, because there's only been one queen at a time in the whole history of England. Oh, my ears and whiskers! We're going to be late. Late for what? The banquet. What banquet? Your banquet, of course. Hurry now. Me. So fill up your glasses with maple syrup and ink. And anything else, don't 
delicious the drink. Mix sand with cider and wool with the wine. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. 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 And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. With 90 times 9. And welcome Queen Alice with 90 times 9. Such things. 